Groundhog Day is a popular North American tradition observed in the United States, Canada, and Australia on February 2nd. It derives from the Pennsylvania Dutch superstition that if a groundhog emerges from its burrows on this day, and sees its shadow due to clear weather, it will retreat to its den, and winter will go on for six more weeks, if it does not see its shadow because of cloudiness, spring will arrive early. While the tradition remains popular in the 21st century, studies have found no consistent association between a groundhog seeing its shadow, and the subsequent arrival time of spring-like weather. The weather lore was brought from German-speaking areas where the badger, German, docks, is the forecasting animal. This appears to be an enhanced version of the lore that clear weather on the Christian festival of Candlemas forebodes a prolonged winter. The Groundhog Day ceremony held at Punxsutawney in western Pennsylvania, centering on a semi-mythical groundhog named Punxsutawney Phil, has become the most frequently attended ceremony. Grunt's Solages in Pennsylvania Dutch country in the southeastern part of the state observe the occasion as well. Other cities in the United States, and Canada also have adopted the event. The Pennsylvania Dutch were immigrants from German-speaking areas of Europe. The Germans had a tradition of marking Candlemas, February 2nd, as Badger Day, Dockstag, on which if a badger emerging from its den encountered a sunny day, thereby casting a shadow, it presaged four more weeks of winter. Candlemas is a primarily Catholic festival but also known in the German Protestant, Lutheran, churches. In folk religion, various traditions, and superstitions continue to be linked with the holiday, although this was discouraged by the Protestant reformers in the 16th century. Notably, several traditions that are part of weather lore use the weather at Candlemas to predict the start of spring. The weather predicting animal on Candlemas usually was the badger, although regionally the animal was the bear or the fox. The original weather predicting animal in Germany had been the bear, another hibernating mammal, but when they grew scarce, the lore became altered. Similarity to the groundhog lore has been noted for the German formula, Zantzisch der Dachs in der Leicheuswosch, so get her auf der Wochen wieder zu Lush, if the badger sunbathes during Candlemas week, for four more weeks he will be back in his hole. A slight variant is found in a collection of weather lore, Bauern Regeln, lit. Farmer's Rules, printed in Austria in 1823. The Pennsylvanians maintain the same tradition as the Germans on Groundhog Day, except that winter spell would be prolonged for six weeks instead of four. For the Pennsylvania Dutch, the badger became the docks, which in Dutch referred to groundhog. The standard term for groundhog was Grundax, from German docks, with a regional variant in York County being Grundzau, a direct translation of the English name, according to a 19th century book on the dialect. The form was a regional variant according to one 19th century source. However, the weather superstition that begins Dare's wet herning is Grunzau Dock. Von die Grunzau Air Schatzent. February 2nd is Groundhog Day. If the groundhog sees its shadow, is given as common to all 14 counties in Dutch Pennsylvania country, in a 1915 monograph. In the Thomas R. Brendel collection of Pennsylvania German folklore, Brendel preserved the following lore from the local Pennsylvania German dialect. Von der Docks say Shadis im Lishmes Mary. Dan Getter Witterin's Lock Unbelate Noves X Vahadrin. Von Lishmes Mary A Our Dry Biz, Dan Bleibt Der Docks Halsuns Wat Noken Anner Free Here Ar. When the groundhog sees his shadow on the morning of February 2nd, he will again go into his hole, and remain there for six weeks. But if the morning of February 2nd is overcast, the groundhog will remain outside, and there will be another spring. The form Grunt So has been used by the lodge in Allentown, and elsewhere. Brendel also recorded the name Grunzsaw-Tag, Groundhog Day in Lebanon County, and Daxtag, Groundhog Day in Northampton County. Victor Hugo, in Les Miserables, 1864, discusses the day as follows. It was the 2nd of February, that ancient Candlemas Day whose treacherous son, the precursor of six weeks of cold, inspired Matthew Leensburg with the two lines, which have deservedly become classic. Kill Louisa ou kill Louis Ern, Lure Rantra and Sacavern. Let it gleam or let it glimmer, the bear goes back into his cave. Hugo, Victor. Les Miserables. Trans. Fonstock, and McAfee, based on Wilbur. Signet Classics New York, 1987. p. 725. The groundhog was once also known by the obsolete Latin alias Arctomys monax. The genus name signified bear rat. The European marmot is of the same genus, and was formerly called Arctomys alpinus. 
it was speculated that the European counterpart might have lore similar to the groundhog attached to it. The German version, with the introduction of the badger, or other beasts, was an expansion on a more simple tradition that if the weather was sunny, and clear on Candlemas Day people expected winter to continue. The simpler version is summarized in the English, Scots dialect, couplet that runs if Candlemas is fair, and clear, there'll be twa winters in the year, with equivalent phrases in French, and German. And the existence of a corresponding Latin couplet has been suggested as evidence of the great antiquity of this tradition. The use of candles on the Christian Candlemas was inspired by the Roman rite for the goddess Februa, in which a procession of candles was done on February 2nd, according to Yoder. The Roman calendar, in turn, had Celtic origins. Candlemas concurs with Imbolc, one of the Celtic cross-quarter days, the four days which mark the midpoints between solstice, and equinox. Scholar Rhys Carpenter in 1946 emphasized that the Badger Day tradition was strong in Germany, but absent in the British Isles and he referred to this as a reason that the U.S. Groundhog Day was not brought by immigrants from these places. There did exist a belief among Roman Catholics in Britain that the hedgehog predicted the length of winter, or so it has been claimed, but without demonstration of its age, in a publication by the Scotland-born American journalist Thomas C. Macmillan in 1886, and American writer-slash-journalist Samuel Adams Drake's book published in 1900. In the Gaelic calendar of Ireland, Scotland, and the Isle of Man, Bridget's Day, February 1st, is a day for predicting the weather. While in Scotland the animal that heralds spring on this day is a snake, and on the Isle of Man a large bird, in Ireland folklorist Kevin Danaher records lore of hedgehogs being observed for this omen. In Irish folk tradition street, Bridget's Day, 1st of February, is the first day of spring, and thus of the farmer's year. To see a hedgehog was a good weather sign, for the hedgehog comes come out of the hole in which he has spent the winter, looks about to judge the weather, and returns to his burrow if bad weather is going to continue. If he stays out, it means that he knows the mild weather is coming. The observance of Groundhog Day in the United States first occurred in German communities in Pennsylvania, according to known records. The earliest mention of Groundhog Day is an entry on February 2, 1840, in the diary of James L. Morris of Morgantown, in Pennsylvania Dutch country, according to the book on the subject by Don Yoder. This was a Welsh enclave but the diarist was commenting on his neighbors who were of German stock. The first reported news of a Groundhog Day observance was arguably made by the Punxsutawney Spirit newspaper of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, in 1886, up to the time of going to press, the beast has not seen its shadow. However, it was not until the following year in 1887 that the first Groundhog Day considered official was commemorated there, with a group making a trip to the Gobbler's Knob part of town to consult the Groundhog. People have gathered annually at the spot for the event ever since. Climber Frias, 1867-1942, who was city editor at the Punxsutawney Spirit is credited as the father who conceived the idea of Groundhog Day. It has also been suggested that Punxsutawney was where all the Groundhog Day events originated, from where it spread to other parts of the United States, and Canada. The Groundhog Day celebrations of the 1880s were carried out by the Punxsutawney Elks Lodge, the Lodge members were the genesis of the Groundhog Club formed later, which continued the Groundhog Day tradition. But the Lodge started out being interested in the Groundhog as a game animal for food. It had started to serve Groundhog at the Lodge, and had been organizing a hunting party on a day each year in late summer. The chronologies given are somewhat inconsistent in the literature. The first Groundhog picnic was held in 1887 according to one source, but given as post circa 1889 by a local historian in a journal. The historian states that around 1889 the meat was served in the lodge's banquet, and the organized hunt started after that. Either way, the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club was formed in 1899, and continued the hunt, and Groundhog Feast, which took place annually in September. The hunt portion of it became increasingly a ritualized formality, because the practical procurement of meat had to occur well ahead of time for marinating. A drink called the Groundhog Punch was also served. The flavor has been described as a cross between pork, and chicken. The hunt, and feast did not attract enough outside interest, and the practice was discontinued. The groundhog was not named Phil until 1961, possibly as an indirect reference to Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. The largest Groundhog Day celebration is held in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, where crowds as large as 40,000 gather each year, nearly eight times the year-round population of the town. 
The average draw had been about 2,000 until the 1993 film Groundhog Day, which is set at the festivities in Punxsutawney, after which attendance rose to about 10,000. The official Phil is pretended to be a super centenarian, having been the same forecasting beast since 1887. In 2019, the 133rd year of the tradition, the Groundhog was summoned to come out at 7.25 am on February 2nd, but did not see its shadow. Fans of Punxsutawney Phil awaited his arrival starting at 6 am, thanks to a live stream provided by Visit Pennsylvania. The live stream has been a tradition for the past several of years, allowing more people than ever to watch the animal meteorologist. 2021 was the 135th, and for the first time, much of the Inner Circle members were required to wear a mask. The Groundhog was summoned at 7.25 am on February 2, and saw its shadow. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the ceremony was held behind closed doors, with no fans allowed to attend. 2022 saw the 136th celebration of the event, and the Groundhog saw its shadow, predicting six more weeks of winter. The slumbering Groundhog Lodge, which was formed in 1907, has carried out the ceremonies that take place in Quarryville, Pennsylvania. It used to be a contending rival to Punxsutawney over the Groundhog Day fame. It employs a taxidermic specimen, stuffed woodchuck. In southeastern Pennsylvania, Groundhog Lodges, Gruntso Lodges, celebrate the holiday with fur somling, social events in which food is served, speeches are made, and one or more spiel, plays or skits, are performed for entertainment. The Pennsylvania German dialect is the only language spoken at the event, and those who speak English pay a penalty, usually in the form of a nickel, dime, or quarter per word spoken, with the money put into a bowl in the center of the table. In Milltown, New Jersey, Milltown Mill was purchased in 2008 in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, by Jerry, and Kathy Gathline, and lived in a cage in the Guthlein's backyard. Mel's first event was at the family business, the Bronson, and Guthline funeral home, with later events moved to the American Legion Post, with free coffee, and donuts served afterwards. Mel died in 2021. Stonewall Jackson predicts at Space Farms Zoo, and Museum. Essex said the Groundhog, and Otis the Hedgehog predict a Turtleback Zoo. Great Neck Retta, of Great Neck, Long Island, New York, predicted in 2020. Quigley, of the Hamptons, resident of the Save the Animals Rescue Foundation, predicts at Quag Village Fire Department. Staten Island Chuck is the stage name for the official weather forecasting woodchuck for New York City, housed in the Staten Island Zoo. In 2009, Chuck bit then NYC Mayor Mike Bloomberg, prompting zoo officials to quietly replace him with his daughter Charlotte. In 2014, NYC Mayor Bill de Blasio, famously dropped Charlotte during the ceremony, visibly disturbing many of the children present for the event. Charlotte's untimely death a week later prompted rumors she was killed by the fall, although the zoo later said this was unlikely to be the cause of Charlotte's demise. As a result, Bill de Blasio has not participated in the tradition since. Dunkirk Dave, a stage name for numerous groundhogs that have filled the role since 1960, is the local groundhog for Western New York, handled by Bob Will a typewriter repairman who runs a rescue shelter for groundhogs. Will is adamant that Dunkirk Dave does not actually predict the date of spring because that is fixed by calendars, but instead predicts the harshness of the remainder of winter. French Creek Freddy is West Virginia's resident groundhog meteorologist. A resident of the West Virginia State Wildlife Center in French Creek, West Virginia, Freddy made his debut in 1978, and boasts an accuracy rate of approximately 50%. On Groundhog Day, 2022, Freddie predicted six more weeks of winter, with the mayor of Buchanan, and members of the community in attendance. In the Midwest, Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, is the self-proclaimed groundhog capital of the world. This title taken in response to the Punxsutawney Spirit's 1952 newspaper article describing Sun Prairie as a remote two-cow village buried somewhere in the wilderness. In 2015, Jimmy the Groundhog bit the ear of Mayor John Freud, and the story quickly went viral worldwide. The next day a mayoral proclamation absolved Jimmy Eleven of any wrongdoing. Buckeye Chuck Ohio's official state groundhog, is one of two other predicting groundhogs. He resides in Marion, Ohio. Woodstock Willie, in Woodstock, Illinois, the shooting location for the 1993 film Groundhog Day. In Washington, D.C., the DuPont Circle Groundhog Day event features Potomac Phil, another taxidermic specimen. From his first appearance in 2012 to 2018, Phil's spring predictions invariably agreed with those of the more lively Punxsutawney Phil, who made his predictions half an hour earlier. 
In addition, Phil always predicted correctly six more months of political gridlock. However, after being accused of collusion in 2018, Potomac Phil contradicted Punxsutawney Phil in 2019, and, further, predicted two more years of political insanity. Birmingham Phil, at Birmingham Zoo, was taking a break from predicting in 2015. In Raleigh, North Carolina, an annual event at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences includes Sir Walter Wally. According to museum officials, Wally has been correct 58% of the time versus Punxsutawney Phil's 39%. Elsewhere in the American South, the General Beauregard Lee makes predictions from Lilburn, Georgia, later Butts County, Georgia. The University of Dallas in Irving, Texas has boasted of hosting the second largest groundhog celebration in the world. The day is observed with various ceremonies at other locations in North America beyond the United States. Due to Nova Scotia's Atlantic time zone, Shubanakati Sam makes the first Groundhog Day prediction in North America. Dox Day, from the German Dox, is Groundhog Day in the dialect of Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. In French Canada, where the day is known as Jour de la Marmotte, Fred La Marmotte of Val d'Espoir has been the representative forecaster for the province of Quebec since 2009. A study also shows that in Quebec, the marmot or groundhog, Siflu, are regarded as cannelmous weather predicting beasts in some scattered spots, but the bear is the more usual animal. Wired and Willie forecasts annually from Wyarton, Ontario. Balzac Billy is the prairie prognosticator, a man-sized groundhog mascot who prognosticates weather on Groundhog Day from Balzac, Alberta. Nanaimo of Ferryport City on Vancouver Island in British Columbia, Canada present Chopper, Marlou and Van Isle Violet, all wild Vancouver Island marmots, for forecasts, via the Marmot Recovery Foundation. In Pennsylvania, Punxsutawney Phil has become a popular tradition. On February 2nd, people within the city will gather to find out whether or not Phil's shadow is revealed. With that, he will allegedly determine whether spring will soon begin by not seeing his shadow, or if winter will ensue for six more weeks. Punxsutawney Phil's statistics are kept by the Pennsylvania's Groundhog Club which cares for the animal. Phil has predicted 106 forecasts for winter, and just 19 for an early spring, with one year where he had a partial shadow, in 1942, 10 years where there where Phil's prediction was not recorded, all of which occurred in the 1880s, and 1890s, and one year where the event was cancelled, 1943, due to World War II. Most assessments of Phil's accuracy have given accuracy lower than would be expected with random chance, with Storm Facts Almanac giving an estimate of 39%, and meteorologist Tim Roche of Weather Underground giving a 36% accuracy rate between 1969 and 2016, a range chosen because local weather data was most reliable from 1969 onward, and a 47% record in that time span when predicting early spring. The National Centers for Environmental Information using a basic metric of above normal temperatures for early spring, and below normal temperatures for more winter, placed Punxsutawney Phil's accuracy at 40% for the 10-year period preceding 2019. Other poor results from analysis are reported by the Farmer's Almanac, which itself has been known for forecasts of questionable accuracy, as exactly 50% accuracy, and the National Geographic Society reporting only 28% success. But a Middlebury College team found that a long-term analysis of temperature high-slash-low predictions were 70% accurate, although when the groundhog predicted early spring it was usually wrong. Canadian meteorologist Cindy Day has estimated that Nova Scotia's Shubanakati Sam has an accuracy rate of about 45% compared to 25% for Wyatt and Willie in Ontario. Part of the problem with pinning down an accuracy rate for the groundhog is that what constitutes an early spring is not clearly defined. Assessments of the accuracy of other groundhogs such as Staten Island Chuck do use an objective formula, in Chuck's case, a majority of days that reach 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 4 degrees Celsius, in New York City between Groundhog Day, and the March equinox. Prediction based on an animal's behavior used to be given more credence in the past when stores of food became scarce as winter progressed. One theory states that the groundhog naturally comes out of hibernation in central Pennsylvania in early February because of the increasing average temperature. Under this theory, if German settlement had been centered further north, Groundhog Day would take place at a later date. However, the observed behavior of groundhogs in central New Jersey was that they mostly come out of their burrows in mid-March, regardless of Groundhog Day weather. There are several different ways of defining when spring begins, but by some common methods of doing so, the first day of spring is around March 20th, 
which is always just under seven weeks after February 2nd, even in leap years. Also the idea of spring arriving early is a highly subjective notion which could arguably refer to almost anything, from several days to several weeks. At any rate, Groundhog Day serves as a convenient, and whimsical milestone to mark the end of the darkest three months of the year, November, December, and January in the Northern Hemisphere, and bookends nicely with Halloween, the two holidays being opposite, and roughly equidistant in time from the winter solstice, with Halloween festivities starting after sunset, and taking place in the nighttime, and Groundhog Day being a celebration of sunrise, and morning. In Croatia, and Serbia, Orthodox Christians have a tradition that on February 2nd, Candlemas, or February 15th, Sretenj, the meeting of the Lord, the bear will awaken from winter dormancy, and if it sees, meets, its own shadow in this sleepy, and confused state, it will get scared, and go back to sleep for an additional 40 days, thus prolonging the winter. Thus, if it is sunny on Sretenj, it is a sign that the winter is not over yet. If it is cloudy, it is a good sign that the winter is about to end. Similarly in Germany, on the June 27th, they recognize the Seven Sleepers Day, see Ebenschlafer Tag. If it rains that day, the rest of summer is supposedly going to be rainy. As well, in the United Kingdom, July 15th is known as Street, Swithin's Day. It was traditionally believed that, if it rained on that day, it would rain for the next 40 days, and nights. The holiday gained more prominence with the release of the 1993 comedy film Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, and Andy McDowell. The film became the 13th highest grossing of the year, with over $70 million at the box office. Over time, the film became a cult classic, and significantly increased awareness, and attendance at Groundhog Day events. The holiday's origins also plays a prominent role in the 1979 Rankin slash Base Holiday Special Jack Frost, where Groundhog prognosticator Pardon Me Pete's shadow is actually manipulated by Jack Frost. Initially so Jack could buy more time to use his wintry magic to protect January Junction from the villain, but over the years since, has become a proper agreement between the two to give Jack more time for wintry fun in exchange for Pete getting extra hibernation time. <laughs>